So today we're going to be talking about Adobe Camera Raw 7, the newest version of the software that gets installed right alongside Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Yes, you also get Camera Raw if you install Elements. It's a little bit, there's a few tools that you don't get, but for the most part, uh, the sliders and the basic panel, which is what we're going to use to create to correct exposure and the tonality of our images. All of those are the same in uh, the one you get when you install Elements, so that's an amazing thing. Before we jump into Camera Raw, I'd like to share with you a few things here. There we go. So you might wonder, <laughs> while we're looking at a photo of ingredients, perhaps for some quality baking, well, that's because this is how I like to think of raw files, as raw ingredients. Unprocessed, uncompressed goodness that you can uh, make all kinds of wonderful changes to, to correct the color and lighting in your images. So that's why we've got ingredients here. Also, um, I'm happy to share with you a discount from iStockPhoto.com. So if you've got any uh, great imagery that you'd like to blend with something else, let's say you took a, a shoot of a wedding and you wanted to blend the happy couple's photo with an oh-so-romantic bed of roses, you might not have that bed of roses shot. So that's a good opportunity to use stock imagery. iStock Photo is my, my favorite stock imagery site. And I always tell folks, if you can't, if a bed of roses isn't the appropriate image to blend your photo with, well, then you can find the right image on iStockPhoto.com, even if it's a bed of nails. <laughs> and iStockPhoto has been kind enough to give all the students at Creative Live a nice little discount on credits, 20% off. And you can take advantage of that special deal by going to iStockPhoto.com slash creativelive.php. So iStockPhoto.com slash creativelive.php. All right. Before we jump into the actual software, let's spend just a few moments talking about the differences between shooting in RAW format and shooting in the JPEG format. Again, with the ingredients for baking analogy. Uh, on the left-hand column here, we can see how uh, JPEGs are processed. So for example, a JPEG to me is like a baked cookie, whereas RAW is like the raw ingredients of a cookie, all, div all divvied out into those nice little bowls that we know you get when you walk into any kitchen on the Food Network, right? All the ingredients are divvied out in those wonderful little bowls. I haven't figured out how to make that happen at home yet. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, that's what raw images are. They are unprocessed, they're uncompressed, they're like a negative. They contain maximum information about your file, maximum color, maximum lighting information. And because there's so much information there and it hasn't been processed in any way, they are infinitely flexible, far more flexible than JPEGs. So if you compare uh, raw ingredients for cookies with an actual baked cookie, think about how versatile the ingredients are versus the cookie. What can you do to a cookie to change it? Well, not a whole lot. You could frost the darn thing, add sprinkles to it. You know, that's about it. But with raw ingredients, you can take ingredients out, you can add chocolate chips, you can add some nice macadamia nuts, you can do all kinds of, of things with a raw image. Also, JPEG images are uh, undergoing some processing in your camera. You may not realize it, but your camera is adding a little bit of saturation, so you're getting a little bit of color boost when you're shooting in JPEG. You're getting a little bit of noise reduction Okay, and you're also getting a little bit of automatic sharpening that's going on. With a raw file, your camera doesn't do anything to it. It is the raw data. So what that means is if you compare a JPEG with a raw file, and I would invite you to do that if you're not shooting in raw already, go ahead and dig into the menu system of your digital camera, and you can turn on a feature that lets you capture a JPEG and a raw every time you snap the shutter. Okay, and that, that would be a neat thing to do for a little while. It's going to eat up your memory card very, very quickly because raw files are honking big. 
but nevertheless, that would be a good exercise for you to do. However, if you compare a JPEG with a raw file, the JPEG is gonna look far better because it's got a little bit of that in-camera processing going on. So it's gonna look a little sharper, it's gonna look a little brighter. The raw file uh, most always will look like crap <laughs> next to a JPEG. Okay, it'll look very flat, it will lack contrast. Okay, but we can fix all of that in the Camera Raw software. Another neat thing about shooting in RAW is that you have the ability to change the white balance after the shot. And white balance is simply your way of telling the camera what color the lighting is. Are you shooting under tungsten lights, fluorescent lights? Are you shooting under light bulbs? Are you shooting under a sunny uh, atmosphere? Are you shooting in a cloudy situation? What is the color of light? Because any light source puts off a color cast to some degree. So if you happen to get that wrong in camera, which I am really good at doing, <laughs> I get so excited because I'm shooting, shooting, shooting in one lighting condition and then the lighting conditions will change. For example, I'll be outside and then I'll go inside and I'll start shooting and then when I come back home and I upload those, those photos to my computer, I wonder why they're all blue. <laughs> because the color of light that I told my camera I was shooting under was wrong. But happily, in a RAW file, since it hasn't been processed in any way, you can change that uh, color of light called white balance right in the software. With a JPEG, you can't do that. Yes, you can color correct it, and, and yes, you can use other tools to make it look like you're really changing the white balance, but you're not really doing that. Okay, so a RAW file is far more flexible, especially in that aspect. Uh, one more thing to mention is that raw format produces enormous file sizes. I'm talking gigantic, huge honking files. And when you purchase this course, because we know you will, and you download all the exercise files, I don't think there's a one of them that's under 10 megabytes. I mean, they're just, they're very, very big. And depending upon what kind of camera you're shooting with, I shoot with a Canon 40D. Those files will be even larger. If you're shooting with a 5D and so on, they're gonna be honking big. JPEG produces a far more manageable file size. Why? Because there's compression happening, okay? So a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the detail in your image is being tossed in order to create a slightly smaller file size. So these are just a few things to keep in mind why you might want to shoot in RAW instead of JPEG. I started out shooting in both for a while until I got sick of filling up my memory card instantly, <laughs> especially because I shoot on burst mode, because I don't often carry a tripod, so I like to put my camera on burst mode. So that means if I fire off, let's say, three shots of any one scene, that shot in the middle should be the one that's sharpest because when you depress your shutter button, you can introduce a little bit of camera shake. So if I depress my shutter button and hold it down and I fire off three exposures, the first one might be a little bit blurry. The last one might be a little bit blurry because of the act of releasing the shutter button, but that one in the middle ought to be the sharpest. So if when I was shooting with JPEG and RAW, capturing both file formats with each depress of the shutter button, you can imagine how quickly <laughs> I was blowing through memory cards. So I shoot with RAW exclusively now, and I just, I wouldn't go back for any reason.